you know the big video that I did when I used to do a bunch of video essays, X-Men and the social justice myth. And I go through a lot of the receipts. I talk about Stan Lee himself, some of the things it is that he's discussed about this general topic of X-Men. I've uh, gone through even uh, what Claremont was talking about with his influence uh, on it. Now, I think it's important that we set the scene here. And, and by that, it's like, what are we arguing? What are we arguing? Because what happens is when you prove the when you show the receipts, you're going to get posts moving all over the place. The post goes here, post goes here. So the the, the original lie, which now people are trying to deviate from as um, they have to, was that Stanley specifically created like as in he went out of his way to make the X-Men um, some sort of analogy for the civil rights era to make Malcolm X. Uh, be some sort of representation or Magneto be representative of Malcolm X and, and Professor X being representative of MLK. Both of those are objective laws. It's not my opinion. Objectively speaking, they, that is not the case. Now, what, what has been talked about on the subject, as I talked about in my recent video, you can go watch that. I, there, was a, there was an audio clip that we did use back in 2007. Stan Lee was on Coast to Coast uh, radio show. And he discussed this and he just flat out says that was the furthest thing on his mind, fighting bigotry, all those things. But it's literature. People are going to have their own uh, interpretations, especially with something that's going down, uh, maybe in, in, in the real world. The best literature often does that. That does not mean that he specifically created them uh, to to be representative of that era in the, in the civil rights or with those individual characters as far as uh, Mag uh, Magneto and Professor X um, are concerned. I do think it's very important as I talk about in that social justice myth video that this narrative came out of nowhere. OK, this was not something that was heavily adopted at all. Um, this is why you cannot find any receipts, any evidence. There's no interviews of Stanley talking about this during the 60s uh, when the X-Men were created nor during the 70s. This conversation really didn't start to pop off until post Claremont era, and especially with other out of out of out of uh, comic book adaptations. That's when it's a relatively new phenomenon, right? Um, that, that just kind of just came up out of nowhere and some people ran with it. And again, it's not to say that Stan Lee himself hasn't had these like done these interviews where people bring it up. He's like, yeah, I can see where people would 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 make that sort of co connection or whatever. But to say that he specifically created them to do that is not true. It is not the truth. That is not my opinion. That is verifiable fact. Go look at the receipts. I have shown you themselves talking about the man himself. One of the things that get that that, that makes this so easily debunkable is when people for sure bring up the Malcolm X thing and I don't know what people all you have to do is all you have to do is read X-Men if you read X-Men don't take my word for anything just read the read the X-Men books originally what was that 63 when they came out or whatever to say that Magneto was like Malcolm X is to say that Malcolm X was a was thought that that his race was superior and that he wanted to rule over them. That's not Malcolm X positions. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because some people don't seem to understand that it was well after a decade. This whole, well, uh, this whole Holocaust thing, that was a retcon. That was not anything that was even remotely alluded to for oh, well over a decade with those original X-Men books. That never was a thing. Magneto was as cutthroat of a villain as you can possibly be. I mean, from 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 the number one issue from X from, from that X Men issue number one, he was talking about how mutants mutants were superior to humans, and he wanted to rule over them. He was a supremacist through and through, and he was an evil son of a gun. That was what he he was a cutthroat villain. There was no, well, they just had different ways of going it because, you know, got people that think for whatever reason, like Malcolm X was like a more militant, again, a historical, by the way. Uh, Malcolm X was just like a more militant uh, version of MLK because all they know about Malcolm X is, is um, I guess, by any means necessary. That's the only thing that they know. They don't haven't read read up on the man. They haven't seen any of his, of his uh, public sort of speaking engagements or anything like that because... He, if you do know who brother Malcolm X, you can go watch my videos on him as well. But if you know exactly who it is, you know that him and Magneto couldn't be anything freaking further from the truth. Couldn't be further from the truth.
They could be further from, oh, excuse me, they could be further, like, in certain terms of the differentiation. But saying they're similar couldn't be further from the truth. But what I do want to end on this is to everybody else that's out there, you see this. I know people have been resharing my video talking about this uh, topic, as well as uh, some of the other, like, you know, the, the originals, like Social Justice video, and some of the other videos that I've done. And they're getting more views because of it. And people are sharing it around. I've seen some reactions as well. And that's cool. This is the thing. You cannot. These people started running with this lie. You are not going to be able to convince them of anything else. They will rewrite history. If they have to. Which is what they're doing. They're rewriting rewriting history. Like even with the original Claremont stuff. Like to, to say that. Even with his era, what his influence was, I've talked about beginning and the Jewish dichotomy. It had nothing to do with civil rights uh, era by any means. But they're going to rewrite history. You can't convince these types of people, which is why I don't think it's necessarily the best uh, usage of your of your time. If you are trying to engage in a back and forth with these types of people, because they will believe what they want to believe, which includes also redefining. Like, what did they, what did this whole well? Hero is not liked by public or groups of people aren't liked by public. Therefore, civil rights. Where did that come from? Because it's like even with like something like the Doom Patrol, like this is something that has been just in general storytelling has been a thing for centuries, man. I have no idea why they think that that's somehow unique to trying to fight homophobia or trying to fight racial injustice. It is insane. It blows my mind. Like, that's not anything that's unique to black people or or unique to uh, uh, gay people. There's been a storytelling element, a storytelling element, excuse me, for quite literally centuries. It's a made up narrative that people just want to be true. And so they're going to run with it. You can't convince them otherwise. But it is hilarious to watch, I guess, in some case, if you get some entertainment out of it, presenting these people with this information and then watching them malfunction. But it's, if you think that you're going to present factual evidence with, to these people and that they're going to somehow say um, they're going to, like, change their opinions, you're crazy as hell. This is not who these types of people are. It's intriguing to watch these guys revise history. But it's also intriguing that now, because, again, the lie has been proven to be exactly that, you get people trying to redefine, like, they, they, they act like so, everything social justice is good is what it is that they're saying, right? So because of, um, you know, Stan Lee stood against, he, he didn't like bigotry, right? And therefore, social justice. These guys are purposely not trying to hear people out in their arguments. They're not trying to hear people out on their positions. And now they're trying to mo monopolize things and essentially saying, well, everything good when someone has some sort of set of values where they want to treat people like human beings, then that must mean woke and that must mean social justice. It's about as dishonest as it gets. It's a trip. Thanks for watching. Be sure to head over to Ripperverse.com to check out our comic book company. We have books, plenty of merchandise, and even some glorious animations from Ripperverse Studios. Next up, possibly our most anticipated book thus far, Yaira.